I'm Steve Tarano. Welcome to Ask a Real Expert. This video is going out to Sircon, Chad, and every other guy who's asked me about getting ripped. Now, typically, guys want to get ripped and women just want to lose weight or get in shape. But either way, the concepts for achieving this are the same. But what people don't realize is that if you're a woman, losing 20 or 30 pounds is not hard. You just got to know the right things to do and to do it. But what guys don't understand is to walk around looking ripped. That is not a natural state for the human body, whether you're a man or even if you're a woman because the body wants to maintain an equilibrium with a greater percentage of body fat on it. So walking around at six or seven or eight percent body fat is a very difficult thing to achieve. Meaning it's not that we don't know what to do, we know what to do, it's just that doing it is hard. In other words, my jiu-jitsu instructor says it's simple, it's just not easy. So walking around at six or seven or eight percent takes some effort. It's not just achieved overnight or by doing 20 or 30 minutes of cardio a day. That is an elite condition. Okay, you are walking around with very little body fat and the body doesn't like that. So you've got to constantly maintain your calories. In other words, maintain or monitor your calorie intake. It can't fluctuate too much. And you need massive amounts of cardiovascular activity. Let me give you an example. I get a big buddy. His name's Scott. He's about 6'4 and change, 300 pounds. He's down to 285. Great. He says, man, I just can't seem to dip any lower than that. So I go, what are you doing? Well, I'm doing like, you know, maybe 30 minutes of cardio five days a week. And I'm like, okay, 30 minutes of cardio five days a week, not bad. I said, uh, hey, what about your eating? Um, what time do you, he says, I'm getting hungry. You know, my problem is I get hungry. Um, and I go, well, what time do you eat at night? He goes, oh, from about 8 to 12. I go, oh, okay, maybe, maybe I should clarify my question a little bit. I go, what time do you eat dinner? He says, uh, which one? I go, Scott, the whole concept I'm trying to give to you is if you ate dinner later, you might not be as hungry later on before you went to bed. See, but what he doesn't understand, and a lot of other people don't understand, is to walk around with that vacuum-packed look if you're a guy, or if you're a woman simply trying to lose 10, 20, or 30 pounds of body fat, we've got to cut our calories and keep that calorie cut consistent. And we have to do cardiovascular activity, because the two coincide, because you can't cut your calories back indefinitely. You can't keep eating less and less and less and less until you're not eating anything. That's why cardio is important. You lower your calorie intake, you keep it there, you act like a grown-up and you monitor it, and then you throw in cardio. And then you see how much weight you're losing. Do you have to do cardio three times a week, four times a week, five times a week? This is how a vacuum-packed look is achieved or this is how weight loss occurs. It's 30 minutes every day, 40 minutes every day, 50, 60 minutes every day until you get the look you want. Then once you get that look, you don't have to work as hard because you're there, but you do have to maintain your diet. And the reason I say it's a maturity thing is because most people want to whine about it instead of work. Oh, I don't want to total up my calories. How come he gets to eat Dunkin' Donuts? Well, it's not about him, it's about you. Also, what people don't realize is this when it comes to cardiovascular activity. We don't always burn 100% sugar and we don't always burn 100% fat. It's a combination of the two. So when somebody says, hey, should I do fast cardio or slow cardio? At a, or at what point do I start burning fat? What if I get out of breath? Am I exercising too much? Things like that. Well, when you jump on the treadmill and you start walking, you're burning fat. The harder you work, meaning the faster you walk, or the faster you jog, or the longer you do it, or the more frequently you do it, the more calories and fat you will burn. With regards to heart rate, people are always worrying about this, and they should to a certain extent. It's not the heart rate that is so important. It's how much effort you are putting out to achieve that heart rate. So somebody goes, hey Steve, my heart rate's at 150. Is that too high? The question I have to ask them is, well, how hard is it for you to maintain that heart rate at 150? 
Guy says, you know, no big deal. I can jog, walk, carry on a conversation. Well, that's a good indication because if you can carry on a breathy conversation, you're not becoming anaerobic. You're not beginning to burn more sugar than fat. But if you get to the point where you can't carry on a conversation or a breathy conversation with regards to your cardiovascular activity, then you're probably pushing it a little too much and you might want to back it down. So again, a heart rate of 120 for me might be perfect for my cardiovascular um, conditioning for me to burn the maximal amount of fat. But somebody who might be thinner, taller, or in better cardiovascular shape, they may say, man, 120 is too easy. I need to get to about 150 heart rate and then I feel like I'm working. So again, it's going to vary and a heart rate is less important uh, based on how much cardio you're doing and based on your oxygen utilization. We're looking at how hard you're working to maintain that level of cardio and therefore the corresponding heart rate. What is the best cardiovascular activity to do? Probably cross-country skiing because it involves the entire body. But we don't always have snow and who has the equipment and all that stuff. So after that, I'm looking at stuff that people can realistically do in their gym or around their neighborhood. At, you know, it's walking, jogging, and running, or a combination of three. That's simple. That's easy. You don't need any specialized equipment. Um, and again, if you're going to walk on a treadmill, it's got to be hard. You've got to raise the incline like you're mountain climbing or climbing up the stairs. I hate the guy who invented the elliptical because people think that's the greatest thing in the world. Because, oh, it's so easy. My big-ass partner, Justin, you know, he's like, man, I'm covering two miles in 14 minutes. I'm like, you think your big ass is covering a mile in seven minutes? Well, that's what it says on the machine. Well, yeah, well, when I'm in a car and I'm doing 60 miles an hour, I'm covering a, a mile in a minute. The point is, is that how much work are you putting out? How much effort are you putting out to cover that mile? That's the point. Again, going back to heart rate, breathing, and effort. Think about taking one flight of stairs. Doesn't seem like much, you know, you step up this much. But by the time you have stepped up and gone to the next step and pushed your body up those eight or ten inches, by the time you get to the top of the stairs, you're a little out of breath. Just walking up a flight of stairs is much harder than just walking. So we want to look at cardio that gets us breathing deeply, but doesn't get us out of breath. So when you look at climbing a flight of stairs, it doesn't exhaust you, you're not wiped out, but when you get to the top, you're a little breathy. And if you took another flight of stairs, you could carry on a conversation with somebody, but again, you're a little out of breath. That's what the way we want cardio to be. So if you're out of shape, walking may achieve that. If you were in decent shape, a light jog may get you to that point. If you were a real aerobics nut, you might have to run or jog at a faster pace to have an elevated heart rate to the point where you really begin to utilize fat. And that's what people just don't understand. So when they get on the treadmill and they do it flat and it's going at three and a half or four miles an hour and you're like my buddy Scott, I'm looking at him like, dude, you're 6'4", you're at four miles an hour, why don't you incline that damn thing? So you start burning some real calories. Meanwhile, I'm standing next to him jogging him and jogging and he's like, hey, look, a marathon man over here. And I'm like, yeah, I cover a mile, I'm marathon man. But these are concepts that people don't understand. So if you're a woman and you want to lose weight, it's a matter of watching your calorie intake, getting out and doing cardio on a consistent basis, day after day after day. Same thing if you're a guy and you're looking for that vacuum-packed, ripped look. It's getting a calorie total, monitoring it, lowering your fats, and then getting on that treadmill day after day after day. Because again, I see a lot of guys, they'll send me a video or pictures, and they're in pretty darn good shape. You know, they're at, I'm guessing, 12 to 13, 14% body fat, and they go, I can see my abs, but I still have this little bit right here. Well, you know what? Your body's going to fight hard to keep that little bit right here, and, and, and that's where you're going to have to pick up the cardio, force the body to use those calories by increasing the, the uh, cardiovascular activity, decreasing your calorie intake or remixing your calories so you're lowering your fat content because by lowering your fat content you can increase your calorie intake uh, I should say you can cre increase your food intake without increasing your calorie intake allowing you to get more uh, satisfied without taking in additional calories so these are all the things that you have to take into consideration when it comes to thinking about a cardiovascular program 
and saying, what do I need to do to lose weight? And I, do I really want to put out that effort to have that ripped look? And then the final thing I'm going to talk about is guys say, yeah, but I still want to keep my strength. How do I keep my size while I'm losing this body fat? Is a calorie deficit going to kill me? At some point in time, it may begin to hurt you. But again, most guys aren't lifting that hard or that effectively. So as you begin to lose your body fat, as you begin to do more cardio, as you begin to cut your calories back, you should have already picked up your training intensity. That should be done regardless because you're trying to get big and strong and have great performance. So if you continue to train hard, train smart, train intensely, train intelligently, that's why I'm always harping on it, you'll be able to maintain your size and strength while still getting that vacuum packed look. And this is one thing a lot of bodybuilders who are on supplements don't do because they have that luxury. They can lift light, 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 light weights, take, take in very few calories, do lots of cardio, and still maintain their size because they're getting artificial supplements from an outside source. But most guys can't do that because they're not you know, supplementing. But again, when you're on a cutting phase, as guys like to say, that's when you definitely have to pick up the intensity of your workouts so you don't uh, sacrifice your muscle. I'm Steve Tarano. Train smart. Train hard.